Hi, everybody. I'm Emily Price, the Executive Director of Healthy Birthday, Inc., the nonprofit that created the Count the Kicks public health campaign. And I cannot tell you how thrilled we are today to have from Lufkin, Texas, Melissa Radke. She was our Every Woman Count speaker two years ago, and a lot has happened since then. And we are just so thrilled to see you. Thank you for joining us, Melissa. Well, thank you so much for having me. This um, is so wonderful. It does so much to your psyche, right? To know that when you left somewhere after speaking, they actually really do want you back. <laughs> because, because people always go, thank you. We'd love to have you back. But you don't ever know if they mean it. But y'all really meant it. Because you're <laughs> so when I got the email from you guys, it was like, hey, would you, you want, maybe you want to hop on a, a Zoom call with us? I was like, I was like Sally Field. You love me. You really, you know, you like me. You really like me. So thank you very much. I needed that boost right now for sure. Oh my gosh. Well, we need the boost of you and your humor and your wisdom. And you know, these are these are trying times. And so my goodness, when I see you on Facebook and um, Rise and Radke and Tutorial Tuesdays, and it is just you just you just can't stop laughing. It is it is the exact light that we need at this time. So thank you for, for bringing that light right now. Oh, you're very welcome. It seems, it seems so silly and I don't feel like I'm contributing all that I want to contribute to help right now, you know, but what can you do? I don't know that there's anything, you know, I can't make masks. I'm not good at, I'm not a seamstress at all. And I'm not the medical profession you would want me to be. And, and so what can I do? And it just seems so silly, but I don't think that there's ever a time that people don't need to laugh, that people don't need to just take themselves a lot less seriously. So maybe I'm just doing the very thing God gave me to do, which is just kind of entertain. And I'm fine with that. <laughs> well, we are, we are the lucky ones to, to be entertained by you. Please tell us more about where life has taken you since we saw you two years ago, what you've been up to. The Radke show was awesome. Tell us, tell us everything. Well, it's been a crazy two years. Uh, of course, the book had come out when I, when I saw you guys, and that was kind of a whirlwind. You know, somebody, there's a, there's a famous quote, I cannot remember who said it, Dorothy was her first name, but it was, it was many years ago, and someone asked this author, do you like having, you know, do you like writing? Do you like writing books? And she said, no, but I love having written. And writing a book is never fun, but the stuff that comes after it, that's what I am built for. And that's the meeting the people and hearing their stories. And how did what I write in my book affect you where you are? Um, and I love that. So I've continued to travel all over the United States. Um, I mean, all over the United States speaking and really just telling the story of courage and how women can just achieve that in their own life. We don't have to be millionaires or CEOs. We don't have to be the smartest woman in the room. We just have to be willing, you know, to step out of the boat a little bit in our own lives. And so that's been really exciting. So I'm working on a second book now. I think it's going to be quite a departure from the first one. The first one was all about, you know, ourself and what we're going to do and how we're going to be brave. Yeah, not the second one. The second one, we're just going to laugh. Um, and so I'm writing a book uh, called Chicken Fried Women. And it's about friendship, kinship, and the women that made me this way. And I was raised around really Southern, strong, opinionated women. And I'm going to tell all of their business. I'm going to I'm gonna, I'm gonna out them completely. So that's going to be a really fun book. And I, I, I like putting, inflecting that kind of Southern humor in everything that I do. Um, our show came out on USA Network. Oh my gosh, it was so hard. You know, I would see my girlfriends and I would be like, I'm so exhausted. And they would say, oh, bless your heart. Are you so tired from shooting the reality show? I mean, God forbid, I know it's so hard. But the truth was we shot six episodes for USA Network. And really, I have never in my life worked such long hours. It's, it's, it's really crazy. A little bit of a behind the scenes that you might not realize is that a sitcom that comes on television for 30 minutes, right? That's only actually 22 minutes of actual tape. The rest is filled in with commercials, making it 30 minutes. But we would shoot 60 hours a week for 22 minutes. Oh I mean, 
it was it was crazy you would it was really long days and although we are not going to do a season two um i do have some things on the back on the back burner but i'm not allowed to talk about them just yet we're not doing the season two but i will say that maybe for the best it was really hard for my kids that was really hard so that was them going to school at 8 a.m getting out at 3 30 then they would shoot the television show until about 8 30 that night and then they would everybody would leave all the production people would leave and then they would do their homework and cram down dinner go to bed and wake up and do it all the next day um and i'm not sure that they were quite ready for that i i don't know they didn't mind it they never complained they were they were troopers all the way but it was it, there were some tough days and of course they they were a little bit like kind of whiny sometimes about it and then when everybody left after we were done shooting they'd be like <laughs> I can't make them up, no matter what I do. Um, but it's you know, it's been kind of a whirlwind these last two years. And I've tried some things, you know? And like with the show, we did the, those episodes and then we didn't get picked up for a second season. And I felt a little bit of twinge of embarrassment about that maybe, or like I put myself out there and it didn't it didn't work out. But then I was like, but Melissa, that's what you tell people to do. Like you just tried it. I just tried it. It, it. Maybe it didn't work out, but man, I had a good time. And who can say that they did that? Not a lot of people. And so I like the fact that at the end of the year, we were going around the table New Year's Eve night, and we were all talking, me and my family, about things we were proud of this past year and things we wouldn't do again and all this. And I just remember saying, I tried it. I tried. It might not always work out, but I tried. And I think that that's, the most important thing I could say to you guys that the last two years of my life, I just tried some things and some of them really worked and some of them did not, <laughs> but at least my kids saw me try and that's important. You know, that is really important. When do you expect your second book to come out? Well, I don't know what kind of world are we in right now? <laughs> you mean this upside down? I have no idea. Um, I, I've got a pretty long ways on it. In fact, David Radke, my husband keeps saying, quit telling people the title of your book until it comes out. What if somebody steals it? I said, who's going to want that title? Now, come on. But I, so I don't know. It's a little ways out for sure, but I am working on it right now. But I know the process and the process is long because then you turn it in. Then you got to edit it. Then you got to, you know, then you, so there's a million more obstacles to clear before it comes out, but I am working on it. Well, that is so exciting. We cannot wait to read it. Um, tell us a little Thank bit, you. how are you staying sane during all of this? You are holed up just like the rest of the country. How, what, what advice do you have for, for all of us so just keeping our sanity these days? Well, uh, first of all, I wasn't exactly the poster girl for sanity before any of this happened. <laughs> So I don't know that it's me you want to look to when you ask that question. But you know, one of the things that I have been doing during this time with my kids. So my children are not homeschooled. They go to public school, like a lot of people. And, and so now having them here every day, all day is a big adjustment. But I am holding everything loosely. You, you know, I'm just, I'm just holding everything really loosely right now. I think I started off gangbusters and we're going to have this schedule and we're going to follow it. And eh, not anymore. I mean, um, I just, I'm holding things a little bit loosey loosely and I'm not controlling maybe as much as I kind of want to sometimes. And that has really helped. I've just kind of had to take my hands off. They're going to be okay. They're going to graduate to the next grade level. Everything's going to be fine. This is all going to go back to normal. Um, but one of the things that I have done is I asked myself the question, okay, Melissa, what if you never get this opportunity again? I mean, this is never probably going to happen in our lifetime. I mean, I wouldn't think, I mean, I, I mean, nobody in my family can remember this ever happening before. So what if this never happens again? What are some things that while you have them in your home for this many hours a day that you want them to learn? And yeah, I mean, we, we have been having a really precious, we have, a, we have kind of a family Bible time every morning. 
And it usually ends with our two kids wrestling it out on the ground, you know, with, uh, it usually ends with one of us in tears. And sometimes we curse at each other, but we really, <laughs> but it's a really precious time. And I'm teaching them some things that they're not going to learn in school, but I got them in my home for a little bit and I can teach them that. We've been so busy. We were so busy with ball and cheer and track and cross country and PTA nights and, and events that we had to go to and serving here and helping there and church this and church that now we're focusing on some things my kids have always wanted to try. We just never had time. My daughter's always wanted to try piano lessons. And now she's taking virtual piano lessons. To be honest, she stinks. She's not very good. She has, she has no rhythmic ability whatsoever, but I'm holding it loosely. I'm letting her have fun virtually online with this teacher. I hear them in there laughing and she's getting to try some things she's never tried. You know, um, I, I don't know. I read a quote the other day. I wrote on my phone. I don't know who said it. So please credit to wherever it goes. But this is what it said. It said in the rush to return to normal, use this time to consider which parts of normal are worth rushing back to. And I love that quote because our life, I was probably like yours were really really full and if this has taught me anything it's that I'm not sure they needed to be so full I'm, I'm just not entirely sure all of that was necessary um so I guess that would be my answer you know I mean granted I do need to see my girlfriends and so I called one the other day and I said I'm gonna drive through Starbucks and you drive through Starbucks but we'll do it in different cars and so we did and she was like three behind me in line and then we took our drinks and we drove to a bank that was closed down and we sat under a, a shaded area of the parking lot, her and her car, me and mine, we rolled down our windows and we talked. I mean, mama needs some time. Okay. But that's, that's about all really I've done. And I'm, I'm just enjoying this time with my family as much as I can. And yeah, when we scream and when we yell and when my 13 year old daughter goes to her room and slams the door, I could cry and OCD about it because I want this moment to be perfect because what if we never have this time again? We got to be a family. We got to be happy. But I'm just holding it loosely. I'm just holding it loosely, you know? So I love that advice, holding it loosely. That is, that is great advice during this time or perhaps always, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Well, we wish you nothing but the best in the future. We cannot wait to read your second book. Thank you for letting us in on that. And um, I would just want to make sure people know to follow you on Facebook and on your website. Uh, Tutorial Tuesdays are hilarious. Rise and Radke. Oh my! <laughs> tell us more about. Tell us more about Rise and Radke and Tutorial. Uh, okay. So. Rise and Radke, if people are watching me and they're like, wait, what's Rise and Radke? What is that? I don't know what it is either. And I'm on it every <laughs> So here's what happened. A couple of months ago, it was right about the time that school started. My, we had gotten the kids to school one day, and I think it was literally like the third day of school. We got them to school. We came back home. We were getting ready for our work day, and we got in a disagreement about something with the kids. And I said, David, you are wrong. And he said, no, you're wrong. And I said, really? Cause we're about to pull up a Facebook live and we're going to go live with this. And I knew everybody would agree with me because they're my followers. Right? <laughs> they did not. They completely agreed with him. And we actually really had a good time. He and I on that live kind of sharing our points of view and people seeing our relationship and we, we had fun. So we, we did it the next day. We pulled up the, the, the phone and we went live for about 20 minutes and then we did it the next day. And then we did it the day after that, <clears throat> excuse me. And honestly, it kind of took off. I'm not kidding you, Erin. This is exactly what happened. That first day, we probably had about 400 people on a live. The next day, about 500. Pretty soon, we were having around seven or 800. And then we started putting it on YouTube. We would, we would fil film it, you know, go live. And then afterwards, we put it on Instagram. And then we would put it on YouTube. And now, at the end of the day, we will go to bed. We'll just check to see how many people watch it. We have about 30,000 views a day, which is more than some television shows. And it's just David and I, we call it Rise and Radke because we do it at like 9 a.m. And it's just he and I sitting at our kitchen table discussing what matters to us, discussing our kids, the news, my hair, 
what am I going to do about my hair, <laughs> my roots, my God, my roots? I mean, <clears throat> just you name it. And people just show up for it. And I think they show up because sometimes I do it in my nightgown and I am very sexy, but also they show up because they look like us. They just look like us and them and their spouses fight like us. And we're just, we're middle income people just trying to do our best in this world and in this craziness. And I think it just makes people feel a lot less alone and we just have a lot of fun doing it. So we do it Monday through Friday and I would invite everybody watching this to come join us. I mean, it's not going to get you any college credits, but you will have a lot of fun. <laughs> you will indeed have a lot of fun. It is just a riot. And thank you for, for letting us into your lives and for being such a light, especially at this time. And so just thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it, Melissa. Melissa, it was great to catch up with you. Well, I love you guys. I love what you're doing. And I think Count the Kicks is so important because honestly, in like nine months, Y'all may be counting more kicks on more babies than <laughs> we need y'all more than ever because everybody's stuck inside and we're going to have a baby boom. And that's what I fear. So I love your organization. Thank you for everything that you're doing. We, we really, have, the Radkeys love y'all as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a great day.